barely alive and live. There we are. Good, that's how good. Are you? Good to see you, Dave. So, how are you? Uh, yes, good, thank you. Yep, all good and good. Good. Well, we're catching up with you, and on Sunday we had a well, sort of a harvest service, wasn't it? We weren't able to do the full harvest because of uh, COVID, but we did have a, a collection, which was great. And uh, yeah, you were speaking on the feeding of the five thousand, which was which was really good. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's you, it's uh, um it's uh, one of those it's one of those ones. It's not easy to speak on. Um, because nobody, everyone's nobody's heard, heard the sermons on it before. Sorry? Nobody's heard the story, have they? <laughs> so, yeah, so the feeding of the 5,000, really important a miracle in the life of Jesus, not because it was, um, it was known as a kind of messianic miracle. It was one of the miracles that Messiah would do when he comes. He would, he would uh, there would be manna in the wilderness, there would be an abundance of bread, there would be an abundance of provision. Um, and so for the Jewish people, this um, was categorical in terms of them understanding Jesus as Messiah. It's, it's, it was fundamental. Right. Um, and uh, it's mentioned in all four Gospels. And um, it's, a, it's a fantastic miracle. It carries with it this understanding of multiplication and, and of God's blessing and thanksgiving. There's, there's all kinds of wonderful themes uh, running through it. So it's a, it's a great great event in the life of Christ and of course it connects back to the temptation in the wilderness um, where Jesus was tempted by Satan to turn the stones into bread and of course that would have been the shortcut but now Jesus is doing that out of compassion for people but he's multiplying what was given to him um, out of out of grace and uh, there's so many themes that you can pick up from it it's a wonderful yeah. wonderful event yeah Good. Sorry about the distraction. I was I was just kind of uh, checking that we are live on Facebook and uh, making sure that if anybody wants to comment, oh, we've got an evening from Alison Foster. Okay. That's nice. So good to see you, Alison. Well, good to good to know that you're there. <laughs> and thank right. you for your support and encouragement <laughs> via via text and comments. It's really appreciated. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Ellie. That's great. So feeding of the five thousand. Yeah. Uh, let me just kind of before we get on to what you said on Sunday, just something you said. You said it was a kind of a messianic fulfillment. Do you think yeah. Jesus went out of his way to sort of uh, put on these things to show that he was the Messiah? Uh, no, no, I think they were going to be just um, outworkings of his uh, messianic anointing. Right. Um, and, um, and, you know, the, the way that uh, he would naturally fulfill um the purposes of god through through that uh, messianic mantle that he carried yeah. um and he, he got that in, in other in other expect in, in other aspects as well so yeah all of that is um is demonstrative of just who jesus is yeah. um but certainly i wouldn't have said he goes out of his way to do that no yeah good that, that was just a kind of a little curveball to start you off mm -hmm. It's just very good. <laughs> That's only my opinion, but I, I just, you know, I, I just, I think it was an outworking of of his, uh, of who he, of who he is. That's yeah. it. So one of the things you said was that uh, the disciples sort of got some plus points, but also some minus points, didn't you, in terms of how they uh, reacted to the situation? So, so what were the plus points? What, what, what? Yeah, what, I think, I think, I think the disciples. I think the disciples like churches. They do some things right. They do things, some things not quite so right. And yeah. I think that's probably the picture of the church um, <laughs> since the time of Jesus. I, I think there are some things they do well and one or two things they perhaps don't do quite so well. And in fact, the things that they do well and the things they don't do quite so well seem to be kind of a standard pattern anyway. So the things they do well is, first of all, they are aware of the need that's around them. And I, and I think that's commendable. I think they... They, they've, they're very conscious about, um, about people's needs. Um, they, they're thinking about that. They're aware of that. Um, and I think there's a message there for the church. I think the church, it's good for the church to be aware of the needs of its community, to be, to be um, conscious about what's going on within, um, within its neighborhood, if you like, within its community, 
um, so that then it can, is able to respond. Yeah. So that's the first thing they do well. The, the second thing they do really well is they bring that need immediately to Jesus. Yeah. Um, and if, of course, that's the role of the church. Ultimately, we yes, we are there to, to offer practical support and love, but we can do something no one else can do. We can access Jesus directly through prayer. Yeah. Um, and, and bringing that need directly to the Lord um, is another thing they do really well. Um, and they just say to the Lord, Lord, you know, this is the situation. Uh, the people need food. Um, it's getting late. They're tired. Um, what do we do? That's great. What they don't do so well is something the church, again, doesn't do so well, is that they come up with a plan before they speak to the Lord. And, um, and I think this is a kind of classic mistake, isn't it? And, you know, interestingly enough, it's a really good plan. I mean, it is a great plan. If you look at it, it's a really pragmatic practical solution to the immediate problem which yeah. is let's get them organized let's get them into the villages and into the towns to buy the food bring bring back a picnic and then we can keep going it's a good it's a really good plan the only problem with it is it's not god's plan yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. when they present it to jesus jesus doesn't want to do their plan and and this is this is an interesting insight i think in how christians can respond to the human need that's around them yeah because very often we want to have a good plan and we want basically to say to the lord we've worked it out there it is and now it's just up to you lord to bless it and uh, and the lord just basically says that's not my plan and i think that's that's a, an interest interesting insight into this miracle mm. so so does god never use our plans <laughs> well you know actually um i'm sure there are times when he does yeah. but he's got his own he's got his own agenda right. and one of the mistakes i think we can do is we can sort of wrest the agenda away from the holy spirit mm -hmm. um it would have been much better for them to actually speak to the lord um and to find out from him how do we go forward with this before they kind of they kind of present him with the plan as if to say it's already solved all i need you to do now is to just bless it as if to say lord we've made you redundant actually we've worked it all out it's fine you yeah. know so that that's part of the problem it's it's actually the involvement of the lord in the process and of course what they do well in the beginning is is that they do involve the lord and they do invite the lord to have comments so that's really important that's why we end up with this fantastic miracle and not just some some pragmatic approach about people going out into the villages and dispersing and probably never coming back again because it was all too difficult and too late. So that, that's the problem with it. Um, it has to have an involvement with the Lord and with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I think that's quite important because I know, I guess you get asked this question, I've got asked the question a lot in the past, you know, when people are seeking God's will, uh, how do I discover God's will? Is it something, you know, is there something perhaps within me uh, that could be part of it? Or is it going to be something that's come going to come upon me? Uh, it's quite a big thing, isn't it, for us as Christians, how, how we know what God wants in quite often strange and challenging uh, situations, perhaps if we're applying for a job or, you know, moving home. Uh, how, how do you think we sort of involve God in those things? We've got a long way from the feeding of the 5,000, haven't we? <laughs> I think I suppose well, one just of the first things you have to between do. kind of me having you know my firm plans and sort of uh, giving room to God for for His input. Well, I think the most important thing is that we 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 actually bring that before the Lord, and 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 so therefore you know our our path, if you like, our plan, if you like, is. Um, as we go forward is really covered by him because we've consulted of God. We've, 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 we've sought after him. Yeah. Um, so there is a covering over that. There is an involvement of the Holy spirit. And I think really that, that comes, um, I think that's really the key to this is how much of an involvement you really want the Holy spirit to have in the way that you're going forward. How much are we yielded to, to what the Lord's will is? Yeah. How much do we want to, yeah. Um, listen and hear 
what he wants to say. And very often, um, as you say, if we if we're facing a situation, particularly if it needs a very quick response, um, we won't necessarily know categorically whether God wants us to turn right or turn left. Mm -hmm. And so we just lay it before him. And I think that actually is very significant to 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 have his covering and, and ask the Lord to to sort of cover and direct us in the, in the path that we're going. Even if we make the wrong turning, um, we've kind of involved him and therefore because we've involved him ultimately we'll get on course and ultimately what he wants in that situation will come through and I think that's what's really important that, that we pray through it all the time even if we're uncertain about what his will is we're continuously involving the Holy Spirit in the process yeah no, that, that sounds really good thank you thank you and by and, and then it becomes a matter of just discernment It's sometimes, you know, it is you have got principles laid down in scripture. And we'll be coming to those in a moment in terms of what Jesus, how Jesus responds to the disciples in this situation. But you've also got um, things that the Holy Spirit might show us within the scriptures, a sense of peace or a sense of of an impression in our spirits. Sometimes the Lord speaks through other Christians. There's all kinds of ways in which we can we can be aware. But I think actually what happens when you come to the Lord in prayer on, on an issue like this, when you're seeking for guidance, your spiritual itinerary, your, your spiritual receptivity gets heightened and you can mm. you can begin to sense where mm. the Lord's directing you. It could be in a conversation with somebody. It could be in a circumstance. But suddenly you become, oh, OK, that's interesting. And, and it starts to resonate with you, probably in a way it wouldn't have done. If you haven't if you hadn't committed it to prayer yeah. and we hadn't hadn't involved the Holy Spirit in the process from the beginning yeah that's good well you, you, you made a good attempt there to bring us back on track in terms of talking about Jesus's response so go well, ahead determined to just <laughs> bring, bring, bring us to order bring us to order well of course you know the the two things that Jesus says I think here are just brilliant of course they are because it's the Lord. Um, I mean, the first thing he says is you give them something to eat. You become you become the solution to the problem. Yeah. And, um, and of course, they look yeah. at the problem and it's just, well, no way can we do this. There's no possible feasible way. It's going to take you know, in, in, in another instance, they say it's going to take a year's wage yeah. to be able to feed all these people. How yeah. can we do this? And then the Lord says again, um, what do you have? In other words, you know, bring me what you've got, basically. Yeah. What have you got in your hand? What have you got in your hand? Doesn't matter how small it is, um, give it to me. And I think there's a really powerful principle in terms of, of giving and in terms of response. And, um, and so Jesus is inviting them to take what they've got and just bring it to him. And what they've got is really small. And it's interesting, they find this little lad who's only got like two little fishes and five little tiny basically he's got a, a, a little boy's lunch yeah and and, and the cynical yeah. part of me kind of thinks i wonder if the disciples have gone off and thought right we're going to find the smallest lunch that we can find in the five thousand okay <laughs> we're going to get and that tiny tiny little weeny little lunch we're going to bring that to the lord and that'll show him you know and so and they bring this lad in and he's um and he's willing to share his lunch and because he's willing to share um, he becomes this part of this story for eternity. Whereas if he decided not to, if he just said, no, I'm not going to share my lunch and sit under a tree and eat it. Nobody would ever have heard about him. But he's part of this great miracle and he, because he's willing to share. And so he shares in the answer, you see. He shares in the response. And they bring it. And, and they think that's the wonderful moment where the miracle is about to happen. Because Jesus is not going to do this just out of nothing he's going to do it out of what we give him yes um and he's going to transform what we give him and so ultimately what's interesting in this miracle is that the people are fed by the boy's lunch mm -hmm. the lord multiplies mm -hmm. but he multiplies the boy's lunch so all he's done is he's made the lunch go round he's yeah. still fed them by what they had in their hand yeah and um <laughs> And that's the that's the powerful thing about giving to the Lord. Whenever we give anything to the Lord, He's able to transform it. He's able to multiply multiply it, 
um, and he's able to do a whole lot more with it than we would ever imagine. And it's transformative for other people. It's transformative for us as well, because Jesus takes it. If you recall, he breaks it and he and he prays, he blesses it and he and he thanks, thanks the father for it. And then because he's thanked the Lord for it, he's kind of invited God and the Holy Spirit uh, and himself to to work through this in the lives of those people that were there. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, it's a fantastic event. Yeah. One of my favorites. I Although tell, yeah. most of the stuff that Jesus does is one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I think with most preachers, kind of, you, you, you're allowed to change your favorite sort of uh, at least once a week, aren't you? Yeah. So my favorites are everything he says and yeah. everything he does. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Pretty much that's it. Yeah. And, and some of the stuff that Paul also uh, talks about. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. even the Holy Spirit's involved in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I can't remember what the question was, though, but that was a very good answer, Rob. So. <laughs> well done. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing, there's, there's an interesting, another interesting point as well that comes out of this is right at the very beginning where the Lord, the Lord has compassion yes. on, on the yes. people that are gathered there, which is, you know, he does have a compassion for their physical need. Yeah. And, um, and that's really important. We understand that um, he has a, a, a heartfelt compassion for people a heartfelt desire for them to be well, a heartfelt desire for them to be healthy and, and for all their needs to be met. But he also has a compassion, and it says right at the very beginning of this passage in Mark 6, um, because they are sheep without a shepherd. So in some ways, the, the ultimate need that they have is a spiritual need. Yes. Um, although they've got a physical need, their ultimate need is their eternal spiritual welfare. And the Lord has that mostly at heart. He's got he's got that at heart. And it's really important we understand that. So we understand that when the church responds, it isn't just trying to meet people's physical needs. It's also trying to do that in the witness of Christ yeah. with prayer, with an attempt to try and 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 help people in their spiritual need and spiritual welfare as well. Good. I'm just thinking about yeah. how we sort of. Uh bring stuff to God. Uh, I, I'm interested in your sort of cynics interpretation of, of kind of the disciples. Uh, I'd, I'd like to offer a slightly less yes. subtle interpretation. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to come out of this as the good guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, remember, Rob was the cynic. Dave, Dave was the one who put the positive spin on it. <laughs> I, 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 I just wonder if sort of the disciples were perhaps almost a little bit embarrassed and ashamed that that is all that they could come up with. I, I mean, I don't quite understand that. There must have been other food, but uh, your, your interpretation might be right. But, but I think there was quite a humbling thing, just sort of bringing that to Jesus and, and sort of almost wondering what on earth can he do with that? Because it wouldn't have made much difference whether they yeah. took one person's lunch or 20 people's lunch or 100 people's lunch. It still wasn't going to go around, was it? And I think one of the difficulties we yeah. have is just accepting that Jesus really wants what we've got, not what we wish we yeah. had. And that, that's the starting point yeah. isn't it, for us, uh, for, for, God, for God using us. And it's quite difficult at times, isn't it? Because it's, it's a step of humility uh, to say, well, yeah. you know, I would love to be in a better place, God. I'd love to uh, donate a thousand pounds or a million pounds. I'd love to be able to, to do this. But here I am, you know, kind of, <laughs> what good am I? How, how, how am I, you know, what good is this amongst so many? Yeah, that's right. And I, and I think, I think um, there is a temptation to think, oh, we can't make a difference. We're not going to do much with what we have. Um, but that's not really what Jesus said. He didn't say, make sure you've got sufficient there to feed them. He said, what have you got, yeah. basically? And whatever you got, however little, you give that to me. And I, and I think that's, we understand the principle here on, on how um, people are provided for and, and in terms of how we respond. We just give what we have and what we can. And we trust the Lord that that's going to make the difference that's needed. Yeah, yeah. And 
I, I certainly know that kind of God's done so many things with areas of my life that, that I, I, I didn't think he could use. I mean, I, I can remember uh, one of the things that I used to be so poor on uh, was, was just speaking. I, I was just so embarrassed about speaking and, and at school kind of they had debating competitions and, and I would run a million miles away from them. Uh, and I just found that kind of God always seemed to want to use something that was, you know, not, not a strong point in my life. Uh, but as I started to give it to him, I discovered that he blessed it. And perhaps some of the things yeah. where people were saying, oh, you know, God's going to really use this in this area. Uh, perhaps in my case, say music. Uh, God just allowed me to move away from that. Uh, uh, and, you know, it was just some of the the weaker things that, uh, you know, God has taken up and used. And that's just amazing, isn't it? It's yeah. just about kind of our strengths and our abilities and, you know, what can how, how can God use us? He's not a human resources manager, is he? <laughs> no, no and, he, and, and in some in some ways, if, if we're if we're too much the finished article, we're kind of getting in the way. So in, it's, it's just for our humility, just being able to bring what we have to the lord and and not as you say not focusing on the inadequacy of it but but focusing on the fact that this is an offering this is a gift offering to the lord and that at no point does jesus say look down at it and say that's not enough he takes it and he breaks it and he blesses it and it becomes enough yeah um and that's that's the great truth of that that it's always enough when it's given to the lord and um and when he's involved and when the holy spirit's involved in what we have it's just being willing to make that sacrifice and being willing to to make that offering to him and and what's interesting here is that okay it is interesting that this this lunch left the little boys it left the little boys um if you like bag but it didn't leave his life it didn't leave who he was because he was able to see this incredible miracle taking place. And that's always true when we give to the Lord. We're always better for it. And, um, and I think that's, that's the impact that has, I think. And it's, there's so many things that we can, we can draw from this, from this event. Yeah. Do, 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 do you feel that that story has any particular application to us as a church at this time? Or is it, if you like, more for individuals? No, I, I think it, I think it can be both. I think um, I think if you're in a process where you are, you're, you're looking to um, to offer something to the Lord, you know that what you can offer is not you're not even going to begin to scratch the surface. That doesn't matter. And that mustn't be something that that um, discourages you. Yeah. But I think the involvement of Jesus, the involvement of the Holy Spirit in everything that we we do and offer to people is really important if we're going to see lives changed and transformed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and sorry, just a cough. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I forgot to do my COVID cough. I should have coughed into my elbow, <laughs> didn't I? I just saw a duck. I just yeah. duck. Yeah. <coughs> I forgot to bring some water with me, so I'm not too sure how the next time is going to go. But. Uh, <laughs> okay. There's the end of the story as well, isn't there? Sort of the, you know, kind of the uh, the collecting of the uh, the crumbs, and uh, <laughs> the twelve baskets. The 12 yes, baskets. That's it. Yeah. And and again, that says something about God, doesn't it? And and the way He does things. Yes, that's right. I mean, and and the abundance, but the powerful imagery of that was was just would have been huge to to the disciples and and to um, to the Jews who were. Who are gathered with Jesus because this is this is like Moses. This is manna in the wilderness. This is God providing again, and and noticing that of course this is coming from Jesus, and and Jesus was the first, if you like, the he was there at the beginning. He was there, um, you know, with the Father making that provision for the Jewish nation in the wilderness, um, and he's there again. And of course, you've got the twelve baskets representing the twelve tribes and the abundance of Messiah and all that God is going to do for Israel. And the the over the overtures and and the 
the kind of um, the things that they would have seen in that um, would have been just um, would have been amazing. Yeah, I, I mean, just you need. I think we need to sort of give us just put ourselves into that context of of being uh, a sort of a, a Jew in the first century of understanding that that this would have been a, such a powerful confirmation of Jesus as Messiah. This miracle. Um, you know that that would have been really significant for people okay just just kind of a perhaps another curveball just to finish off with if there right so okay many, if there are so if you like so many powerful messianic instances how how was it that kind yes. of come the cross everybody had just deserted him you know if yeah. all the time you know it, it wasn't as if uh you know you, you could say, well, the walking on the water, that has significance in terms of being the God of creation. But that was a bit of a private event, wasn't it? Because it was just his disciples. But this, this is yeah. thousands of people who are, you know, literally seen, uh, you know, someone who could be the Messiah, acting in a Messiah way. Uh, and we can add other things to that. How on earth could... Uh, yeah, he's just reached the. How could they? And how, nobody sees Yeah, I mean, I mean, as, as Jesus approaches Jerusalem, they singing Hosanna. Yeah, he, you know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Um, here, here is an, uh, if you like, declaration of of Jesus as 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 a Messiah coming to Jerusalem. And yet a week later, um, you know, there's ridicule of Christ at the cross. So absolutely, you've got this this um, this really a feature of 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 the fickleness really of 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 human beings and 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 how easy it is to, for us to uh for our for our understanding and our view to be sort of altered so quickly it's why jesus says to the disciples you know pray you know tarry with me for one hour lest you fall into temptation because it was so important that they do that yeah. but the interesting thing is is what is what happens in the death of jesus because the death of Jesus is the transformation in terms of people being able to see him for who he truly is. Yeah. So in Mark's gospel, one of the last things that's said to Christ is the ridicule and mockery of him uh, before he dies. And then after he dies, the, the first thing that's said is spoken by the centurion who says, surely this man was the son of God. That's the power yeah. of the death of Jesus. Um, and it's the power for people to be able to see just who he is um, and, and for that, for the veil to be lifted from their eyes, so to speak, and for them to truly understand that, that Jesus not only is the eternal son of God, but he's the answer to the, to the, the eternal questions that they have in their lives. Yeah. And, and, and perhaps that kind of helps us make sense of just how important the the cross is because you know kind of thousands of people saw the miracles you know some messianic some not so messianic one roman centurion sees jesus dies and and comes up with that amazing confession that it seemed it was difficult yeah. for the jewish people to come up with surely yeah this was the son of god and and it it is the cross and the resurrection of jesus isn't it that uh, that testify as to who he really right. is. Uh, everything That's else right. is prelude. Yeah, everything is a prelude, and 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 um, and it's really as as we come to the cross, we come to the um, to the resurrection. Um, you 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 get to a place where the the this this possibility for really understanding who Jesus is is made clear and and is made alive uh, for people. Um, and of course, then the, the church's mission is to go out um, to to spread that word yeah. um, in a way that um, wasn't being a, wasn't completely unveiled, wasn't completely revealed uh, before that. So now the power through the death of Christ to take the veil away, if yeah. you like, from people's eyes to be able to truly believe and truly see who he is now. That is made that that is made possible because of the death and resurrection of Christ. Yeah, right. Well, that, that, that's that's maybe a good point to to finish with. 
Yeah, unless yeah. You, unless you can that's good. The trumpet with. No, I've got no trumps. No. Okay. <laughs> No, just, um, as I say, just if you haven't read it for a little while, read it, meditate on it, you know, just sort of chew it over and pray into it because the power there of, of the anointing of multiplication, the anointing of, of God taking what you can give him and transforming it is all in that passage. And, and, I, and I think it's, uh, it's one that we need to go back to time and again. Yeah. Yeah. But do, you, do you want to finish maybe by praying just so that perhaps we, we, we've got no yeah, idea who's, that'd be great. who's uh, listening or watching, but perhaps just an opportunity for us to bring the little that we have, but, you know, what we have got and just give it to Jesus and ask him to, to bless it. Amen. Amen. Well, Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that whatever we've got, it's not... It's never too little. It is, it's, it's whatever we carry in our hand. It's just our willingness to give it to you. And once we, once we give it to you, we know, Lord, that you will transform it. We know that it will be a blessing to somebody. And so we, we pray, Father, that this, uh, this passage of Scripture just resonates in our hearts and, and releases things from our hands, so to speak, so that we just... It not only involve the Holy Spirit in what we're doing, but that we're willing to give to you in all kinds of ways so it can make a difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And we're very conscious of that at the moment and particularly at this time, how much people are in need. And I'm sure the Lord looked out on that on that crowd and he had great compassion on them. But I'm sure he looks out on the world today. And I'm sure he looks out on this nation and he has great compassion. And we just pray, Father, that we can't in ourselves make a huge difference, but we know that we can bring it before you and that you can. And therefore, we pray, Lord, use us in whatever tiny little way that we can be of help. Use us, multiply it, bless it, and enable us, Lord, to be part of your solution to people's need. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you ever so much, Rob. And uh, bless you, Dave. Great talking with you again. Yeah, thank you for all that you've shared. So you take care. Bless you. You take okay. care now. Bye bye. Bye then. Take care.